Welcome to step one of Make a Print Book and Photoshop Basics. There are four aims to this video. The first is to open an image in Photoshop, the second is to crop the image, the third is to adjust its appearance, and the fourth is to save it in a suitable format. Why do we start with images when we're looking at putting together a print book? Well, you're going to need images for a cover, a logo, and probably a picture of yourself as well, and then we'll put it together with the text. There are alternatives to Photoshop, even though this is the industry standard in image processing software. It does cost a bit, so you might consider getting a free 30-day trial from adobe.com, or perhaps looking at downloading for free paint.net, or Pinter, which is particularly good for Macs, or GIMP, which is also for free. If a Photoshop icon is not showing on your desktop or elsewhere, you might need to go down here to the left and click on the Start button if you're on Windows. If you're on a Mac computer, go to the Applications folder. Have a look at the programs or applications, and don't look for a folder beginning with P, but A for Adobe. Here I've got Adobe Design Standard CS6, and you'll see inside there the software including Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is go to File, open. In order to open an image, which I've already prepared, this is a high resolution image that you can get from youandmitchell.com on the resources page. And the second thing we're going to do is to crop an image. This is the toolbox here that I'm clicking and dragging, just waving around a bit. I'm going to go down here to the crop tool and click that. And watch what happens to the image. Ooh, little activation nodes happen. This means we can actually move the image and crop it. Now, see how these grid lines start up. You can get rid of them if you don't like them, but I think they're quite handy to help you focus on what you're going to focus on. And you can do from, from them from either side or the top and the bottom, like this. Now, if you don't like those overlay grids, you can go up here to where it says Rule of Thirds in View and you can say never show overlay and there they've gone. But I kind of like them, so I'm going to leave them there. If you aren't able to crop in an unconstrained way, that's because you may not have unconstrained selected and it might be forcing you to crop in a certain ratio, any one of these here. So just make sure unconstrained is checked. Now to actually do the cropping on a Windows computer, you can hit enter, a Mac, you can hit return. You can even double click on it, but I'm going to do the visual thing here and click on the tick and you'll see how it crops to the size that we specified. Now we're going to move on to adjusting its appearance. We go up here to the menu that says image and we go to adjustments. I'm going to go across to brightness and contrast, but before I click it, have a look at all the other color variations you can do. Too much for now. Let's keep it simple. Just play with the brightness. Just make that a little bit brighter. It's a bit too bright. Perhaps the mid-20s will do. Contrast, let's see what happens when I do this. Oh, yeah, it's making it bluer. I might make that quite a bit bluer. Yeah, up into the 60s, and I'm going to click OK. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. There are other adjustments you can make. You can see Auto Tone here, and there's Auto Contrast and Color. You can play with these, but if you make an adjustment and you think, oh, I don't really like that, well, hit the best command ever invented, which is Undo. On a Windows computer, it's Control Z, and on a Mac computer, it's Command Z. Let's look at something else on the image menu, and it's mode. Here you can see that this image is an RGB color, which stands for red, green, and blue. These are the three colors needed to make up full color on a computer screen. We'll look at CMYK color in a minute. Underneath, though, we have 8 bits per channel. This is to do with the complexity of the color, and I've never needed to use anything more than 8 bits per channel, so we'll leave it on that. Also on the image menu is the image size. Now, I'm going to ignore the width and the height for the moment, and I'd just like you to have a look at resolution, which here says 300 pixels per inch. Please leave it on pixels per inch, even though you can change it to pixels per centimeter. The reason why I ask you to do this, even if you're a metric person, is that printers do talk about 300 DPI as being printing quality. Now, technically, there's a difference between DPI, dots per inch, 
and PPI pixels per inch, but this is the resolution it's left on. Now, if you're not quite sure what resolution is, it's to do with how sharp or how blurry the image is. If you magnified the screen that you're looking at now, you would see that it's made up of dots. In fact, 72 dots per inch. But for printing, we need higher quality and we're going to need 300 pixels per inch. So if you could just click OK and leave it on that for the moment. We've completed the third aim. Now for the fourth aim to save it in suitable formats. Go to File and down to Save As. Keep it in the JPEG format, even though if you click here, you can see, whoa, there's lots of other formats. Just keep it simple at the moment. Perhaps extend a name by adding cropped, something intuitive like that. Come over here to click Save. Another dialog box comes up to say, do you want to save it at maximum quality? Well, why don't we just bump it down from 12 to 11, just for the hell of it. And you can see here that now the file size is only 1.3. It's a little bit smaller. Then to finish off the process, click OK and it's saved. But there is one more format I'd like you to save in. The RGB format is suitable for an ebook, but for a print book, we need to save it in CMYK, which you access by going to image mode, coming down here. Now CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, yes, the K is for black. It refers to black being the key color to which all the others are calibrated. When you click it, you'll get this dialog box which says you're about to convert to CMYK. Do you want to do it? Yes, you do. Click OK. Nothing much will seem to happen. But now we're going to save it by going to File, Save As, just as we did before. And this time we're going to change the name to CMYK, just to differentiate it. Please do save it as a JPEG. I know some people will be saying, oh, you should save it as TIFF. That's the tagged image file format, because that is technically better for print. But just for the moment, a high resolution JPEG is absolutely fine. Come over here and click Save. Maybe we will make it the maximum file size. I wonder what this will bump it up to. 5.5. Well, that's OK. Click OK for the save to finish. And we are done. We've opened an image in Photoshop, cropped the image, adjusted its appearance and saved it in two suitable formats. If you'd like to close this file, just go and click on the X up here. Thank you for watching and please remember to comment or click like if you found this video helpful. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, then why not click to subscribe?